Hello, everybody. We're going to release faith today right into your life for you to be healed, set free, and delivered. Today's message is hot off the press. The Spirit of God has been dealing with me about three days about sharing this. And um, so let's just jump right into the Word. If you got your Bible or tablet or whatever it is that your device that you use, we've already prayed and released faith that you get it today. Amen. Okay, so we're going to, we're establishing facts, and this is our ninth video. <laughs> this is our ninth video on uh, its introduction to the 19 ways that God heals. Well, why would you have so many introductions? Well, you can't get it all in one setting. <laughs> we've hit it so, we've hit it so, uh, from so many different angles that well, we're getting testimonies that people are getting healed off the introduction because it's all good. It's all the Word of God. Uh, it's not my teaching. It's the Word of God teaching. So we want you just to kick back and to pay attention and, and just get involved today uh, with your faith and have ears to hear and a mouth to do. And you go do what you hear. Well, how do you do that? You hear it and then you say it. You hear what the Word of God is saying and then you do what the Word of God is saying. Okay? And so, but the bottom line is you can live above the circumstances of life. Let me say that again. The bottom line is you can live above the circumstances of life. That's what the Word of God is for. Okay, now all, let me clear something up. All this stuff that people's calling tests and trials and persecutions and all those things. You know, I've been persecuted for years and it didn't even dawn on me. You know, I got saved when I was eight years old and got spirit filled when I was 20, about 20, 21 and, and started living my life for Jesus, preaching and ministering and going all over the world. I uh, hadn't went everywhere yet, but I've went more than your average Joe. And I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet either. I'm keeping on going. And so, but I found out something. I, I said, it, it dawned on me. I, I've been getting persecuted all these years and didn't even realize it. And I, I thought the people were just ignorant because I learned you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That'd have healed somebody right there. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. So I didn't even relate it to getting persecuted by people. I just thought, well, they're just ignorant of the Word of God. Well, come to find out, that's what it is. It's just that simple. If they wouldn't be. It's just like it's just like when they uh, pers when when uh, Paul when he was Saul persecuted man even unto death some people. He was persecuted. Well, he was just ignorant of the things of God. He repented, then he started ministering in the things of God himself. And so he wrote the majority of the New Testament, more books than any of them. And so what are you talking about? Well, a lot of this stuff that's going on, it's just because people are ignorant of what to do and then how to do it and then actually do it. It's just, they're good people. Some of them are wonderful people. But... Uh, they're just ignorant if they don't if they never have been taught. I mean, they come by ignorance honestly. I'm not picking on them or trying to be funny. I'm just saying we we all in some areas of life are ignorant. That means not trained. Ignorant and unlearned men is what the Bible says. Well, you can learn today. You don't have to walk around, be sick, and die with some disease. You don't have to. Well, why do people do that? They're ignorant of the word of God. So let's dive right in. You can live above the circumstances of life if you hear and then do what's being taught today. Amen? So let's dive in here. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. What are we talking about? Ways that God heals. What is a merry heart? It's a medicine. It's like a medicine. Proverbs 17.22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So check your heart. What are you doing? I'm just, I'm just feeling bad. And I don't know what to do. Well, you're going to have to stop that. That's not prayer. That's whining. What do you got to do? Well, you got to repent for being stupid. I, we, 
That's not a put down. I had to do the same thing. I didn't know. I was, I was not, when I was eight years old and born again, I had, I've had to learn this stuff just like anybody else that walks in victory. You see all these people walking in victory. You say, well, how are they doing that? Well, you got this. This is how they're doing it. So it's just say it one more time. to give you time to turn there. It'll help you even read it and say it. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I, don't, I can't think of nothing to be happy about. I had a Bible school down, a Bible school down in uh, Dewar, not a Bible school, but a, a home Bible study. And then we passed her down by there too in Henrietta. And, uh, but this Bible study, so we're going to think of a hundred things that we're going to think of, uh, uh, no, ten things. We're going to think of ten things uh, to be joyful about and thank God for. And one lady looked at me and looked at the ceiling, and looked at the floor, and looked everybody in there. She said, I can't think of one thing. I said, are you saved? She said, yeah. I said, are you spirit filled? She said, yeah. I said, you moving the gifts of the spirit? Yeah. So then what did she do? Well, she started getting over into the spirit and she started thanking and praising God. And what happened? A merry heart did good like a medicine. You know what healed her? She got healed that day. And she said, every time those thoughts would come, those negative thoughts, I said, no, 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 devil, I'm not going to do the negative. I'm not going to see myself in the ER. I'm not going to see myself in the hospital. I'm not going to see myself in the casket. I'm not going to see myself scared to death to drive. She was scared to death to drive. So I'm not going to see myself doing that. I see myself rejoicing in God. What did she do? She started rejoicing in God and a merry heart did good like a medicine. She got healed that day. Isn't that wonderful? She ran fear off too. Fear was related to all those things. Let's look at one more. You have to know what to do when destruction and famine comes. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> you have to know what to do when destruction, destruction and famine comes. Job 5.22. Job had to learn it. What did he do? He said, laugh. <laughs> he said, laugh. He said, laugh. He said, laugh. Praise God. He said, laugh. Read it yourself. It's on a misprint. It's, uh, it's what you do. You hear it. And then you do the word. You hear it and do it. You got it? So it, that's Job 5.22. I know I can hear the pages turning. People's wanting to turn to that. It says, is the Bible really teaching this stuff? Yeah. I had an old guy down in church. He was all mopey all the time, you know. And he lost his this and lost that. And his house got burnt down. I mean, his wife left him and all kind of stuff. Kids was mad at him. His daughter wouldn't live with him. And just, I mean, just all kind of stuff. He, he hurt this and got mad. But you know that you can get happy in the same pants that you're getting mad in? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can get happy in the same pants, the same mess that you're in that's making you sad. You can change it to glad. You can change it to laughter. You're the one that has to do it. Nobody else can do it for you. Well, I don't see anything funny about that. No, no. You're going by what you see instead of by what you say or what the Word of God says. The Word of God says this will fix it. Do you want fixed or you just want people to feel sorry for you and <laughs> pray for me? You know what? Nobody pray for you. They're going to pray the Word of God over you and you're just going to get mad. What do you do? You have to change it. I mean, I know you don't feel like it. It doesn't. N none of these scriptures, I'm going to give you four of them, none of these scriptures says anything about you feeling like it. Now, you're going to feel like it. <laughs> after you activate that faith and you start coming off that deathbed and you start coming out of that car accident and you start getting protected from the goofy stuff going on in the world and when things don't affect you like everybody else, you just laugh it off. You ever heard somebody say that? Let's laugh it off. Well, you know, remember that old commercial? Some things is a tough spot. When you get in a tough spot, it's a commercial. You have to shout it out. <laughs> Amen. You have to shout it out. There's a lot the Bible says about shouting. I mean, if you only shout and praise God and laugh when everything is going good, you're not very mature. Let me say that again. When you just shout and praise God and worship God and love Jesus, 
and, and have joy and laughter when everything's just going rosy. You know, roses has got thorns there, you know, but you can shout it out. Well, shout in the tough places, you got to shout it out. <laughs> Amen. You got to you got to turn up the volume sometimes. You can just sit in a chair and shout it out. It gets so good, you just start to vibrate and have to come up and shout about it. Yeah! You just have to. Okay? So what do you do in famine and destruction? You laugh. I know it's contrary. Your flesh don't want to do it. Your carnal self don't want to do it. Your natural five senses don't want to do it. Those are all enemies of God anyway. But when you do, Job 5.22 and laugh. It says laugh at it. Laugh at it. Laugh at it. You want to be an addict about something? The only safe addiction is God. The only safe addiction is the Word of God. Laugh at it. Amen. And it'll take you over and you'll have you'll be loaded daily with the blessings of God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. This activates. You can also, you know, we've been teaching a series a few weeks ago on the benefits of speaking in tongues. Well, this is one of the benefits of speaking the word. Amen. Amen. I said, amen, somebody. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Take it right now. OK, let's look at another one. Proverbs 15, 22. The joy Everybody say joy. The joy is by the answer of your mouth. What's the answer of your mouth? Oh, I don't know what to do. Bloom despair and agony on me and a deep and dark depression, excessive misery. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Woe is me, but pray for me. No, that's being double-minded like James 1.8. You had to be single-minded. See, people say all that Molly Grub stuff, and then they say, pray for me, because they want people to think they're, uh, think they're spiritual. They're spiritual, all right, but it's the wrong spirit, because the right spirit's full of joy. The right spirit the right spirit's full of love. I've seen people on their deathbed and get a hold of this. I remember one time somebody said, a couple different times, well, more than that even, they said, uh, we want you to come pray for so-and-so. Well, I couldn't get to them. I, I was flying to Phoenix or flying to Egypt or flying to Africa or flying to Belize, something. I just couldn't get to them. I said, so I just jotted down these scriptures. I could give this to them and, and then do it with them. And they said, okay. They didn't know what they was getting herself into. <laughs> and so they went down there and they, then they said, well, Mike said, to, uh, just, uh, let's just do these scriptures. So they read all these scriptures and they just practiced laughing. Now, they didn't feel like it. They just feel like laying there not move it. They was doing good just lay there and not move. But they started practicing. Ha. Ha ha. Ha. Ha ha. <laughs> ha. Whoo. <laughs> Glory. And you know they come out of that bed? They said, now every time I laid down, that wanted to come on me. And I, just, I, learned, I learned to laugh in bed. Proverbs talks about that. Rejoicing in the bed. Rejoice in the bed. Rejoice in the bed. And they come out of that. They come out of that bed. Amen. He just went to bed to sleep, take a nap or something. And they, but they didn't live in that bed. They didn't die in that bed either. Amen. Praise God. So let's go a little bit deeper here. Proverbs 15, 23. For the joy by the answer of your mouth. It's by your mouth that you have joy. So you have to connect your mouth with your spirit. And when you connect your mouth with your spirit, then the spirit gets involved and starts laughing through your mouth. But you have to start in the mouth and it, get, it goes down. See, you're hearing it. You're going down to your heart. I mean, all you have to do to not participate or to participate, say, you know what? That's what I'm doing right now. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. And it goes down to your mouth, goes from your ears to your mouth, and it goes down to your heart. And it get down, get out there in, in your spirit being, and your spirit starts laughing through you then. Shoot, it'll run some stuff off. It'll run the blues off. It'll run diseases off. It'll run cancer off. It'll run anything you can think of off that's not of God. 
Amen. That stuff will leave you alone. Why? I said, oh, I'm not going to mess with them. They'll beat me to death with laughing. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Let's look at one more here. Your strength. Where is your strength? Your strength. Where is your strength? Let me say it again. Let's soak in. Your strength. Where is your strength? It's a good question, isn't it? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Oh, I'm a strong Christian. You need to tell your face you are. <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. I believe in God and go to church, read the Bible and pray. We need to tell your face that. You can tell your, tell your face, participate with the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord your strength. Amen. Praise God to go to church. Praise God. Praise God you go to church. Praise God you read the Bible. Praise God you speak in tongues. Praise God. But do you do it until it produces joy? Hallelujah. Joy. Woo, somebody's getting it. Joy. <laughs> Amen. Do you do it? Do you hang out with God until it produces joy? Like Romans says, a quickening. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo! Thank you. Whew, glory. <laughs> woo, glory. It's getting thick in here. Your strength. Where is your strength at? Read in the Bible. Read these scriptures. Look them up. They're in the Bible. I just, I just picked. Holy Ghost has had me pick four. There's a whole lot more in there, brother and sister. If you're not participating with this, you've missed half your life. Amen. Maybe more than that. And you can't even enjoy life without it. Amen. You can't do it. No, you can't. You can't do it. You can't enjoy life without the joy. See, it's not, what, what's the New Testament say? It's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit. See, you're trying to push, shove, struggle, everything else. No. No. Enjoy it. How do you enjoy it? Give in to these Scriptures. Not just hear it, but do it. Amen. And what over in New Testament, you know, it, the, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but joy. <laughs> joy. I'm trying to teach this thing. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy. 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 Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Joy. <laughs> Some of you hadn't laughed. Being in the Molly Grubs and thinks you're, thinks you're really turned on to God. No, 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 no. Take it. Take it. Take the joy. That's right. Just let the joy of your mouth let it go down into your heart and your spirit and come back out of your mouth and they're going to run some stuff off. Run the blues off. Amen. Financial pressure, just laugh at it. You'll do more by laughing at it because you've got to be in faith to laugh at it. Amen. Let's go a little bit deeper. Your strength. Where is your strength? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nahum, I mean, uh, <laughs> my, my, my mind's getting disconnected from what's going on. Uh, getting over in the spirit. Nehemiah 8.10 The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. So just take it now. Just release it. Release it, release it, release it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. So I want to leave that with you today. I want to pray right now. We are releasing faith into your life. Praise God. Pray now might be a, a good time to just take your healing. And see, take it with your words. Take it with your joy. Take it with your peace. Amen. Take it with that. Amen. And so, and then the next thing that you do is that you, we want to give you an opportunity. We want to pray for your finances. We speak over finances. We're not a, not a day of lack in your life. Not even one day. Not even one day. And we want to encourage you. Let's see, what happens is Deuteronomy 8.18 says, God has given you the power of wealth. When? To establish His covenant on the earth. Don't worry, there'll be plenty enough 
uh, pay all your stuff too. But he wants to give you the power of wealth. Well, how do you get the power of wealth? Well, the way you get the power of wealth is you take part of your wealth. You take part of your seed. You take that, you plant it into the work of God, which this is the work of God. You're getting fed right now, the work of God. <laughs> Whew, the Lord is good. You plant that, and then you, he, he, he blesses it with the power of wealth and gives it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. So do that today. So write me a letter. And uh, the address is Mike Riley, 918 North Griffin. That's Mike Riley, 918 North Griffin. And the uh, Okmulgee, Oklahoma, 74447. Amen. Be blessed and released today. The joy of the Lord is your strength.